is actually your spray gun, brand spanking new. Okay, this is basically your air on, air off. This is your product on, product off. Okay, now the, the main thing that's actually on here that does get dirty, that needs more maintenance than anything is actually these pieces right here. This is your mixing chamber, this is your spray tip. <clears throat> these are the ones that actually have need more maintenance than anything. Normally a, a full gun, a mixing chamber should run you the entire shift, okay? Should run you the whole shift. But if it does mean need maintenance, you're actually gonna have replacement parts. All you have to do is disassemble the front portion of the gun, replace that piece and your spray tip, and then you're ready to start spraying again. You don't have to do a full breakdown. The full breakdown, like I said, which you have here, should be done once a month. If need be, they can do it maybe once a week if you wanted to do it. That's really depending on you guys, okay? On the, I mean, normally at the OEM level, they are rebuilding these after every two days, okay? Now, basically, when you actually do the rebuilding, uh, basically what you're going to do is you're going to remove your side blocks. This is your 3 16 Allen. Uh, your best bet is actually working off a bench vise. Keeps the gun stable. This is actually your A side side block or ISO side block. You never want to, if, the, if you actually do take these parts, do not mix, intermix them with the B side and A side. You don't want to do that. You will have a the material will react. This should remove this section here as well. What we're basically going to do is a full breakdown so that way you can take a look at the inner components of the gun. And there you go. This is your A side block. This is your, I'm sorry, B side block, A side block. You can take a look here. If you take a look at your components here, this section here is actually this side right here. You have a Dalrine seal, spring, side seal, which is this, this piece right here. That's actually 35, is actually an O ring that's actually on this piece right here. Okay? And then that's your side seal retainer, which is this piece right here. One thing's for sure. These pieces, when you do take them off, you will actually want to take a look and see how it's actually popping out. There's going to be times where that piece won't be protruding the way it is now. If it is not, for example, if I take them off and they're protruding this far out, that means they're working. Leave them alone. Don't do anything with it. But if they're not protruding, that means we'll have to take it off. And the side that does give you the problems is this side, the ISO side. The B side is rare that it actually does it. But if you have to take this off and rebuild it, what you want to do is you want to take your 13 millimeter. You're actually going to and then unscrew this right, right, right off. There's going to be times that you're going to have a tough time, so you might have to grab a propane torch and lightly heat it up to actually loosen it up because the ISO does catalyze with just the moisture in the air. So you can take a look here. This is your side seal. This is your spring. And this is your Dalrymple seal. Pick that, just take that out. Now this piece right here, believe it or not, <clears throat> it will collapse. I mean, I'm sorry, it will compress after off and on, off and on. And there's a way to actually determine that. I'll show you once we get the whole gun put back together. So basically what you want to do is make sure you use the round side, press that up, just hold it, and it pulls right out. So these are actually the components you can take a look at. And this is the O-ring that I was referring to. You definitely want to take a look at this O-ring because with time, the, the ISO will tear that up because it actually makes that, uh, that O-ring, you know, nice and hard. So if it does, if this gets pretty brittle, that's going to replace that. Now the time that I'm telling you is when you do take, oh, sorry. When you do take it off, there's going to be times that you're actually going to see it like this. Okay, that's telling you that it is not working and it has to be disassembled. It should be protruding completely, okay? Okay, now what we're gonna do, and these are identical, okay? So what we're gonna do is take off the filter assembly. Filter assembly, here we go. Should be clean every day as well. Because, like I said, it does pick up a lot of the trash that is in the material, and the lines taken off. Then you know, changing material is when you actually get majority of your trash. So you basically have a filter. And this is a 60 mesh filter here. You have a check ball, and you also have a spring. That's right in. So this section here is actually this back here. You got your spring filter, the check ball, the O-ring, and then the filter support. 
So this does slide right out. And then your O-ring. So these right here, basically the best thing to do is blow a compressed air, hold it up to the light, make sure you can see right through. Sometimes, not always, the ISO can catalyze within the filter. And if actually you take it off and it just sometimes say, okay, it looks clean. But believe it or not, the best way to do is blow it and hold it up to the light, make sure you can see through it, okay? That is basically your filter assembly. Now what we're gonna do is remove the front portion. This is your spray tip. This is the section that actually the material does come in and atomize. This is an O1 spray tip. It's just a spray tip insert. Best way to clean this out, if you, uh, the kit does come with a drill bit, best thing to do is drill it from the back end and then basically you can heat it up a little bit with the propane torch and then use your drill bit again. But you always drill it from the rear end, not from the front. And what ends up happening, if you do it from the front, you're actually gonna wallow out that spray, that um, the round pattern and it's basically gonna give you an oblong shape. You always wanna make sure it's from the back end. Okay, that's your spray tip. That's actually this section right here. That one there, B. Okay, what we're gonna do is remove the front housing. So basically, this is your uh, 530 seconds. And to do the, uh, the mixing chamber and spray tip assembly, uh, taking that out, you will have to remove the side blocks as we're doing now and the front housing to access the mixing chamber. Okay, this is your mixing chamber. It's an O1, meaning one gallon per minute. Now, the, this year here, these orifices right here do get clogged up after a certain amount of time. The best thing to do is actually, if you have to do a, a mixing chamber, say you don't have one ready to go, propane torch, what you want to do is just slightly warm it up. Don't get it too hot. And then you're going to use actually a paper clip that you actually you're going to poke the orifices. The kit does give you a drill bit. The problem with the drill bit, you actually start to scar the chafer ends right here of the orifices. But a paper clip works the best. So just basically poke it right in there and poke it right in the front. Put compressed air, shoot it out, put your fingers right here in front and make sure you can feel the air real good. After you do that, hold the gun up to the light and look right through the surface. You should be able to see as clear as day. Now, if you're not able to see as clear as day, I'm telling you it's the same thing, it's still dirty. Use your paper clip, warm it up, compressed air, once again, hold it up until you can see as clear as day. That is really important. Believe it or not, material, especially on the ISO side, material will build up on here and will set the machine off ratio. Believe it or not, that small orifice can give you an off ratio of almost a thousand pounds difference. And that's the one thing you definitely don't want to do. Okay? The material works from zero to 500 within that range, and that's where you want to be. But you really want to be between the two to 300 pounds because of the viscosity of the material. But once you start reaching above the 500, Normally, that's going to tell you that you're starting to get a dirty mixing chamber, okay? Now, to remove this, basically just screw this off. If it is hard to get off, what you're going to want to do is use a 7 millimeter and a 13, and then just unscrew that right off. There is a solution called All Solve that you can actually soak these parts in, and it will break down cure isocyanate and bed liner. It works great. You don't have to heat it up. It's just a cold solution that you can drop in, leave it there for about an hour, Come back, use your paper clip again, front portion and compressed air, and, and it actually will clean it just like this, brand new again, okay? So once again, it's actually part number A here. This is your trigger assembly. Basically, you can see here, you don't have to go all the way in, should be just flush and finger tight. Just unscrew that piece, sorry. You actually have a spring, the backing, and just basically push this out. The O-rings that do wear out the most is actually the trigger, okay? Especially on hand application because you're always constantly triggering the gun. Once you turn it off, you're always triggering the gun to purge the tip and uh, mixing chamber. Now, the, the O-ring that actually wears out the most is actually this one right here, the front one. And there's, a first, there's actually an indication that when it actually does wear out, you can actually take it out, you can spin it, and you can see that the O-ring is a little bit higher than the actually trigger itself assembly. But if you actually slide your air on, which is on this piece here, if you slide your air on and you actually hear air coming out of the exhaust port, that means first and second O-ring is wore out. 
that's that's an actually an indication. It, it, believe it or not, it does happen. So if it does, best thing to do is take the trigger assembly out and go ahead and replace all three. Now the reason why you want to do that, like I said, most people say, well, I'm going to run through the day. Well, you're losing a lot of that air pressure going through the exhaust port. You want the majority of the concentrated air to come through the come through the gun and flush that mixing chamber out. Once you start losing that pressure, you actually are going to start getting a, a start dirtying your mixing chamber a lot faster. So if you ever do hear that exhaust coming out, just stop, replace the O-rings. It's a lot easier. It's going to keep a longer life in, in production for that mixing chamber and spray tip. Okay. So once again, if you have if you hear exhaust when you turn it on, that means uh, air coming out of the exhaust. Sorry, is that the first two O-rings are wore out. Okay. Now this is your main body. This is actually you got an O-ring here, O-ring here. If you take a look here, as soon as, once you turn it on, the air actually goes right in here and activates this trigger. So trigger on, it actually pulls, it engages it backwards. When you let it go, it pushes it forward. Okay. Now the way it works, just to give you the inner components, is as actually it sits just like this. When you put the screws down, the, actually you have that spring that's right there that's pushing that side block, that side seal right onto the mixing chamber. That, that basically is how it holds that pressure in. It'll actually hold up to 5,000 pounds of pressure. Now, if you actually have a scratch right here or a scratch on it, the moment you open any of the ball valves, it'll actually, you'll actually have material just blow right out. So if it blows right out, that means you actually got an issue with the sight seal or mixing chamber, okay? Granted, like I said, I'll explain it to you a little bit more once you're getting back together, I'm gonna to show you the inner components, okay? Now, this is the back part. This action right here is your trick emergency stop. Basically, trigger on, trigger off. That actually, they actually put that on because a few years ago, uh, actually a guy that actually been spraying for more than five years, became a little bit oversellous. Basically put it on, had the air on, balled, and he forgot and he grabbed the gun and shot himself in the chest. So that's what you don't want to do because this material, once it mixes, it does pass 230 degrees Fahrenheit. You definitely want to watch out for that. Okay, so basically it comes right off and then you actually use, the best thing to use is a ratchet, but uh, I think we have a 10 millimeter. Actually goes right in here. Let's see if I can use this one here. Like I said, you want to use a 7 millimeter, but I uh, don't have one at the moment. But this is okay, but you definitely don't want to do this. You really want to use the proper tools. 7 millimeter is the best keeps it from scarring the shaft. Let's just unscrew right here. There we go. So you really want to be careful. So just keep, what we'll do is unscrew this. And it feels like it's going to take forever, but it's actually a short thread. So once it gets to a certain point, then you basically now you can grab your pliers and just pulls right out. Okay. So you can see there, you got actually got a snap ring. Okay. And hopefully this will work. Sometimes, so what you want to do is just stick right in there. There we go. And just pull that right out. What you want to do is just set it on something solid and push completely. That comes out. So basically here you go. Show those in a minute. Uh, there's going to be a dime, but believe it or not, if sometimes people forget to clean. Okay, you have a rear hole that's right here in the back portion. And then you actually have one right in the, under here, which you can barely see, but it's back here in the trigger side. There's going to be time when you actually trigger the gun and when you actually release it, there's a delay for it to come back. And if you have that delay coming back, that means that orifice that's right here and the orifice back here on the trigger side needs to be cleaned. Basically, the, it basically it's getting clogged. So the moment you relieve that trigger, that thing should pull back as quickly as you release it, okay? So like today, I had a call of a guy telling me that basically a delay on the trigger, on the release. That is the first indication they're not cleaning properly, okay? One thing you definitely want to do is just making sure, just basically, uh, when you actually do disassemble, if you, uh, you want to make sure uh, no scarring in here. You want to make sure your O-rings are good. The one O-ring that does wear out more than anything is actually this one right here. This is the one, these do wear out, but not as quickly as this one. This is the one you really want to pay attention to. 
if you look in your manual, it's actually this one right here, part 14. And you can see the O-ring 37. That's the one that does wear out, okay? So these here, like I said, they will last you a good while. And the other O-ring that actually does wear out is actually this one right here in the middle. Okay, that one right there. That's going to be this one right here. This one right here, which is going to be part 44. You definitely want to take a look at that O-ring. The best way to test it is you should have some type of resistance when you actually put it on. Okay, if it actually, you put this on and it feels kind of loose, best thing to do is just go ahead and replace it. Okay? Now, when you have a full disassemble, there's going to be times, believe it or not, it does happen. Once the one side might overpressure, you pull a trigger, and you do have material that will cross into the gun. That's where these access ports come out, okay? If you ever do have that problem, best thing to do is do a full disassemble, remove all your set screws here, and what you'll want to do is use a propane torch. You want to heat up the entire gun. So basically, the area that you really want to pay attention is actually this one. You have a port that comes down and then cross. This area right here in this corner is where the material will build up. So you want to make sure, heat that up real good, go ahead and use a uh, basically a, a long, you could use a tool kit, fix it, and just poke right in and poke as much as you can off. Then use compressed air and shoot every single hole there is. Now when you actually put them back, you want to make sure uh, either put some grease on the threads or one drop of blue Loctite. What ends up happening, if you do not do that, you're going to have air leaks all over this gun. Okay? So basically, now when you're ready to reassemble it, you want to, like I said, once again, make sure if there's any scarring on the shaft right here, you want to use a uh, green scotch bright patch, just put it right here, and just shine it back up. And it'll actually smooth this whole piece out. Okay? Once again, this is the yellow ring that does wear out. Okay? Once you have it all ready to reassemble, just drop it in. Use this piece, push it down, okay? And it, you will not damage the threads because it's actually a perfect fit, so it goes right in. Then you're ready for your stop, okay? Once again, this is the O-ring that you want to want to watch out for. Yeah, it does wear out. This one here, does it, it, this is rare for it to ever wear out. Drop it in. Now, have a lot of patience when you're actually putting this one in because it's a perfect fit. I can't tell you how many people fight this. <laughs> it makes me laugh. So, like you see here, once you hear that huge click, that means you got it in. Okay, now you're ready for your snap ring. Just squeeze it. And there you go, and just drops right in. Uh, there's actually another set they have here that I did bring. Uh, that actually works better. But you want to make sure you put that snap ring in. Okay, once again, you'll have this piece here, your piston. But of course, uh, one thing you definitely want to do is you want to grease it. Always grease everything with white lithium grease, okay? Uh, I don't have any here, but this gun is not in any service at the moment. But it basically what you do is you grease everything up, drop it right back in, push that down. Use your 10 millimeter uh, ratchet would be better. Just screw that down. And what you want to do is keep screwing it. pushing it down. This one is a little tough. There we go. Now what you're looking for is this rod right here, this piston. You want to make sure that it spins. Okay, see how it's spinning? Most people actually put a 7 millimeter and give it a little torque. I do not recommend that. This is the aluminum body here. All it takes is just a little less than an eighth of a turn and you just broke that thread. Your best safety for it is the moment it spins, that's all you need. You don't need any more than that. Then you're ready for your cap. Just grab your adjustable and just give it a snug. This right here does not have to be scorching time, okay? Just remember that. This is your trigger assembly, same thing. You wanna grease that up real good. Slides right in, long stem in first. Put your spring right on that portion there, push it down, and this is your adjustable stop there. This here, you don't, you all, you like I said, you just want it to have it flush. J 
just like that. It doesn't have to go any further than that, okay? Now you're ready for your mixing chamber. Once again, before you put any mixing chamber on, always observe, make sure there's no scratches, make sure the sides are nice and shiny. If they're not, just grab your scotch brite pad, polish it back up. It needs to be nice and shiny for you to get a proper seal. If you have a lot of, just say, dried ISO, any cured bed liner that's in there, you're not gonna get a good seal. This has to be nice and smooth, as well as these side seals. Once again, this sits here, and then as it engages, and disengages just basically that mixing chamber slides back and forth and this is actually what holds back that pressure so once again make sure there's no scratches here and no scratches on your side seals if there is best thing you need to do is discard them and put a new set on because well like i said the only thing you definitely do not want to have to do is you don't want to have any material blowing out during production because all it takes is a little bit of uh, raw material to get on your substrate and then you're going to get blistering okay all right, grab your 13 same thing, you want to make sure, don't get it tight, and you want to make sure the, 12, uh, the 01 is at 12 o'clock. But if you happen to go past it, do the full rotation again, and make sure that 01 is at 12 o'clock, just like that, okay? Now the reason why you want to have the 01 on top, this way this side is always the ISO, and this side was always a poly. This way it stays the same, never changes. Okay, that, that's the best way to really keep this gun keeping the way it is. All right, now that we have that, now we're ready for a front housing. Slide that on. But before you do that, once again, sorry, those O-rings, you want to make sure those O-rings are there. Okay, now you're ready to slide that on. And it is, it is a perfect fit. Slides right on. There you go. Just make sure you line up your ports. And you're at 530 seconds. Just slightly get them started. And they will cross thread easy. It is aluminum body. So you want to be patient. All right, once you get it started, don't torque it down until you get the other one done. All right, once you got it done, then you give it a good torque. Same thing with this, don't want to over torque it, that's why they give you a straight. Don't ever use your, a T handle or a right angle. Just give it a tight. All right, now you're ready for your spray tip. Now this one here just slides right in, doesn't have to be in any position, okay? Then your spray cap. Same thing, you want to make sure that's greased up, you want to make sure everything around inside is actually clean, okay? And sometimes, believe it or not, I had a guy in, the first guy I'd ever done that, that cross thread at this mixing chamber. So it is possible. And you know my years of being in this industry, I've never seen that happen. But he's the first one that's done it, so that tells me it can happen. So you want to make sure. Okay, the same thing. As you're torquing this down here, this is the natural point of stopping. That's all you want to do. No more than that. And it's correct, you'll have that spray tip sticking out just a little bit right there. Okay, now before we assemble this, there's something that's really important in this gun. It's called tip adjustment, okay? Now what you want to do is go ahead and make sure your trigger is disengaged. There we go. You want to push it down. Okay. You can see here, when you actually turn the air on and pull the trigger, that's going to cock back just like that. This is the thickness that you're looking for. It's, it's going to be the thickness of a dime, okay? Really important. If it's too far back, if it's too far back, you're going to get more ISO than poly. If it's too far forward, you're going to get more poly than ISO. So you want to make sure that tip adjustment is properly. If you're not sure if you have it aligned properly, what you can do is, uh, I don't have any grease here, but you can grab a little bit of grease. What you want to do is put it right in there, just like that. Grab your side seal, your side block, sorry, and you actually put it right on. And you can actually take a look at the orifice. See, you can see the hole of the orifice is right on that. That means your tip is adjusted properly. If you have to make any adjustments, right back here. It's a 9 16 I don't have one, and you have a hex nut. So just make your adjustments. Clockwise, it's going to push forward. Counterclockwise, it's going to push it back. Okay? So that's really important that you pay attention to that tip adjustment. Okay? Once you, got, once you have corrected, 
Just push that and it brings it back. Okay, now you're ready to assemble your side block. Just put that on. Then your 3 16 Same thing, just get it started. Once you got it, then torque them down tight. Don't get them crazy tight, because what ends up happening, it's the same thing as aluminum body, you'll actually start to smash this piece, okay? Normally, and it's a eight, I think it's a eight foot pounds of torque. That's it. All right, now we're gonna do assembly here. Now, first things first, you actually wanna put your filter assembly on, slide that on. You wanna drop your spring in first, and then your check ball. Now your check ball, if you take a look in there, you want to make sure it's right on top of that spring. Okay, really important. If you don't have it on top, you actually put the filter. They say it self-adjusts and self-aligns, but that is not true. Okay, I took one off here the other day and that check ball was literally smashed right into the spring. Yeah. <laughs> How it happened is beyond me. But same thing, you just want to make sure that it's all in that spring. Then you're ready because you actually seats right there. The purpose of that check ball, so if you do have them, any side that does overpressure, it will not allow it to go up to the, the spray hose. Down your 7 sixteenths. And the same thing. Don't get it to it. Just a natural point of stopping. That's all you need. Okay. Now to reassemble this is basically you're going to grab, you'll put some grease right in there. Just a shot of grease, a little white lifting once again. Side seal downward. And basically, what you're going to do is you're going to push it in. And once again, it should this is as basically as far as it protrudes. Now, sometimes if you don't get it, if you push it in, it does not protrude. the The area that you're going to have trouble is actually right in right in here. There's a lip right in there. So what you want to do is make sure to grab your pick set and clean that lip off real good, and as well as the lip on this side seal right here. This is where you have the most buildup of material. Okay, once again, you slide that in, push it down. This is the dial ring seal. So the flat side goes down first, your spring, and then your side seal housing. Now th there is it, when you're torquing this down, same thing, you want to get to the natural point of stopping. That, that's your natural point of stopping. Then little less than an eighth of a turn. And okay, once you do confirm that, you wanna squeeze this. It should squeeze, okay? If it does not, what you wanna do is loosen it back up and then bring it back. And then it should engage, because sometimes it does get jammed up. So once you confirm that it is squeezing, you're good to go. Then you're ready to reassemble it. Just get them started. If you have to move this to, to adjust it, go right ahead. Okay, now that we got it, get them tight. Now, once again, it doesn't have to be crazy tight. And there you go. Now, you want to pump this full of grease, but when you actually are like assembling for production, the only time you want to pump it full of grease is when it actually goes into production. Then basically you do is you put your grease gun here, pump it full of white lift and grease, and once grease comes out of the front, you're good to go. And then once you're ready to actually then you put it into production, turn your air on, and you want to trigger the gun several times to purge all the residual grease. The main thing of the grease is, it's gonna fill up the back portion of this portion here, and it's actually gonna fill up the very bottom and top of the, of the mixing chamber. This is gonna prevent from any ISO crossing over and preventing the cross contamination, okay? And that's basically all your rebuild of the P2 gun.